Shalom, brothers and sisters. So let me just touch on this quickly because it's going to get out of hand really fast over the next few days as Israel continues striking back at Hamas who started all this. So number one, what they used to do in the past is when they attacked anything Hamas related in the strip, they would knock on the roof. Knock on the roof is they would warn them there'd be a knock on the roof and then they'd have a time limit to get out and evacuate the building before the Air Force came in and leveled it. They have not been doing that now, obvious reasons, but uh, when it comes to hospitals and places like that, they are still doing knock on the roof to give people time to get out and evacuate before they hit those areas. Areas being used by Hamas leadership for planning and storing weapons and executing their attacks against Israel. So not just indiscriminate attacks on civilian structures as the world would want you to believe. The other interesting thing for me that's coming out now is um, Israel has also, Netanyahu has made sure that they've warned all of the Gaza citizens to clear out from the areas they're going into. And they've given them advanced warning and enough time to get their stuff and go. This is your warning to be able to stay alive. Get out. Because we are coming, which is a huge courtesy in the midst of a brutal war, which normally doesn't happen in any country. So they've done that and uh, the Israeli military revised their call on Gazans to flee to Egypt, which was interesting for me because they initially said to them, flee to Egypt. It's the easiest approach. Briefing foreign reporters, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Hecht said he would advise Palestinian refugees to get out through the Rafah crossing on Gaza's southern border with Egypt. His office then issued a statement later, clarification, the Rafah crossing was open yesterday, now it is closed. Does that mean that uh, they don't want the people coming into their country, Egypt? They stand in solidarity with them against Israel, but they closed the crossing. And they've since then now reopened it, but they've put limits on how many can come through. These are people in crisis that you apparently are standing with against Israel. How are you not just letting them all come through? It's interesting, isn't it? You think with the amount of space they have, especially, that they would take in everybody fleeing the area in the wake of what lies ahead. And make no mistake, what lies ahead is going to be <clears throat> in the world's eyes and ours horrific the devastation that lies ahead the fury and anger burning in israel at the moment is unprecedented since the holocaust this is what has brought the entire nation together divides across the split in israel are now sitting together and their provisions for working together is that netanyahu must promise to wipe out eliminate completely remove any existence of Hamas anywhere. So yes, that sounds right. You know what the problem is? The cancer of Hamas is so infiltrated into that Gaza Strip society that it is really difficult to separate that from the civilian population because the civilian population have been educated now for generations to hate Israel indiscriminately and they have been sheltering, harboring and assisting Hamas as an organization all this time. So it is extremely difficult to try and remove this cancer 100% and not get civilians on that whole total of deaths that's coming as well. So the world is going to scream and shout. Pray for the innocents that are caught on both sides. And, and like I said, it's going to get rough in the days ahead. In the beginning of this whole war, they said that what they have planned... And what lies ahead is something no one can imagine and no one has seen before. And it will happen and it will change the Middle East forever. So, I mean, hectic. That could be something weapon-wise that they're going to use in Gaza to clear the whole area. It could be the Dome of the Rock being removed once and for all and being done. That would change the entire landscape 100%. Um, we know Damascus is a target because uh, they've already threatened them saying if they enter the war, we're coming for Damascus. That's Isaiah 17. So there's a lot of huge prophetic things going down at the moment. What I want you all to focus on 
besides the obvious is pray for Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which I say all the time on this channel, and specifically all of those grieving, all of those captive, all of those lost, all the horror that has been experienced. But not just that, pray for all civilians caught in the midst of this chaotic, horrible, evil war. And I mean all, because we as the body of Christ stand in prayer for those innocents. And we know God's in control, but watch and pray. Huge things are about to happen on the landscape. Huge. And it's right in front of our eyes, right before we leave. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.